Welcome to Techniques to Calm, Balance, and Center Yourself. Um, Just Breathe uh, is the name of this class, and excited that you are joining me. My name is Bridget Neese, and I am the owner of Ancient Traditions Healing here on the North Shore in Grand Marais. And um, I have been practicing breath work in one way or another, um, probably for about 25 years. I was first introduced to um, breath work or um, something that we call pranayam through a yoga practice uh, early in life, but then studied um, with a really beautiful woman and teacher who specialized in breath work. I um, actually traveled to Spain to do some training with her and uh, it's a practice that I really love and um, it, in my opinion, is quite powerful. I think there's lots of things that I really love about it. One of them being um, the simplicity of of it. The fact that you don't need any equipment, that you can do it anywhere at any time to support you. Um, Yeah, it's it's just a great tool. I feel like it's a um, really powerful tool that's often overlooked because of its simplicity, right? We all breathe every day um, and us thinking about that being a conscious tool to uh, manage stress and anxiety in our life is not something that um, I think a lot of people in our culture really think about. So I'm excited to share some of this information um, with all of you um, that are watching. And yeah, let's go ahead and dive in. So a little bit about the class um, and how it's gonna be broken down. We'll spend the first part of class um, just sharing some wisdom about Uh, breathing and um, its relationship to the heart rate and different um, functions, uh, stress hormones in the body, so that you have kind of an overview of why this technique is so powerful. Um, And hopefully I don't geek out too much with the sciencey stuff. I tend to to kind of like that. So I'll try to say the surface level. So um, all of you that are not big into uh, the sciencey bits of the human body can still follow along and get something really beautiful out of it. Um, and then once we've kind of done that, we'll take a short break uh, for you to run to the bathroom, grab a blanket or a pillow or anything that you need to be comfortable for the practices. And then we're going to actually dive in and do kind of more experiential stuff. I've got Um, I don't know, five or six different breathwork techniques uh, that are all good for that calming, um, moving through places of anxiety, recentering, regrounding yourself that we'll practice. And um, then I'll give you a little space after each of those to just kind of feel into your body and just notice any shifts or any changes that might be occurring for you as a result of the practice. Um, You'll have the opportunity to maybe make some notes or journal about the ones that you're enjoying, the ones that are resonating with you so that you have those as tools then going out into your daily life. And um, yeah, and then we'll wrap things up. So uh, let's just talk about the breath a little bit, right? One of those things that we all do every single day. Um, But I am hoping to kind of change your perspective on, on the breath and um, being more than just a um, function that happens throughout the day uh, without you needing to tune in very much. So um, breathwork is a highly effective modality. We've got tons and tons of studies at this point, and I'll talk about that a little bit more as we move forward um, of all the different ways that breathwork affects um, us from a physical standpoint and from a psychological standpoint um, that really help us to calm and center. Um, You know, our breath is something that occurs, you know, without much thought. I mean, thank goodness, right? (laughs) We wouldn't wanna have to be awake all night thinking about the breath. It's something that just occurs without much thought. Um, It's a process. It's a process of taking in oxygen, delivering that oxygen to the cells, um, the cells releasing the carbon dioxide. And with the exhale, we release the carbon dioxide, right? I mean, that's that's what most of us learned in school about breath and what breath is. Um, I am hoping to enlighten you to it being much, much more than than that. I mean, it is those things and um, also more. (laughs) So um, we have the ability to breathe unconsciously, as I kind of mentioned before, and consciously as well. 
So studies have shown that controlling the breath or manipulating or um, changing the rhythm of the breath has these very um, beautiful and specific effects on the, both the brain and the body, as I mentioned. Um, there are breathing patterns that can help you feel more alert, more awake, more energized. And then there are breathing patterns that can help you calm and center and help you fall asleep. Mostly we're gonna be focusing on um, that kind of last category. Uh, but if you get into this and um, moving forward, you wanna investigate or reach out about some of those more activating practices. Um, I find them very helpful in day-to-day -day life as well. You know, I see clients um, all day throughout the day um, during the week and often we're having conversations about um, energy levels, <laughs> you know, fatigue, stress, uh, the, that comes up for almost every person. And when we talk about the ways that people are managing it, you know, I, you may not be surprised by this, but I hear so often that people are managing those levels of stress or fatigue with caffeine and herbs. Uh, CBD is a big one that's out there right now. And kind of riding this wave of highs and lows. Um, and I would just like to open your eyes to the idea that we have a tool within us um, that just turning our consciousness and our awareness towards our breath, that we can activate and energize our system and relax and quiet our system, um, both with the breath. So we take an average of somewhere between like 17,000 and 23,000 uh, breaths per day, uh, averaging out you know, around the 20,000. Obviously there's a lot of variables in that depending on the activity that you're doing, your health, your age, those types of things. But it's exciting to me to think about, you know, with 20,000 breaths that we take in the course of the day, that if we were intentional with just the smallest portion of that, like what are all the possibilities of how we could enrich and enhance our well-being and um, our, our overall uh, sense of being present in, in the world and in life? Um, so your body, it, you know, breathes on autopilot, like we talked about, um, or I mentioned here just earlier, um, you know, when we're sleeping, but really through most of the day, we're not thinking about breathing as a process. Um, but it really is one of the most effective ways to lower everyday stress levels and, um, improve a variety of health factors. Um, ranging from mood to metabolism. And we'll, we'll touch base on some of those bullet points here a little bit moving forward. So but before we go any further, I would like to um, let you have a little bit of an experience with the breath so that we can really start dropping in with this awareness of our breath and the breath possibilities that exist. So I am going to grab my phone here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set a timer for a minute. And what I want you to do whenever I say start is I want you to just start counting your breaths. Now, the fact that we are turning our awareness towards our breath, even just to count them, um, is going to change the breath somewhat. Uh, so just try to keep your breath as like natural and relaxed and regular as possible. What I want you to do is count each inhale and exhale as one breath. So inhale, exhale, that's one breath, okay? Not, man not manipulating the breath at all at this point, just observing and counting. So here we go. Hope everyone is ready. I'm gonna push start and then just start counting the breath until I say stop. About halfway there, keep counting. Right, and stop whatever number you're at there. Remember that number, write it down on a piece of paper. Um, 
just hold on to it. So um, the numbers look like uh, most people, like their range is somewhere between 14 to 20 breaths per minute. So I don't know where you are, where you fell in that. And when we do this as a live class, it's always pretty interesting to kind of check in with everybody and see what their number is. I did this um, earlier this afternoon when I was preparing for class and my number was 13. But as I said before, like having the awareness around how to use the breath, turning you know our awareness towards it automatically starts to affect that um, number. So I'm sure that my number in you know any given moment in the day is at least slightly higher than that. Um, so whatever your number is, you know, in that kind of range or maybe it's a little higher, um, probably not much lower than that if you are in your natural rhythm um, and flow. So what studies have shown is that to alter um, our nervous system, um, and we'll talk about this a little bit more from the um, sympathetic to the parasympathetic, uh, we need to slow our breath down to about five to six breaths per minute. So if you take, you know, um, one of those numbers, let's say even 14, uh, you would be breathing about two and a half times faster than what uh, studies have shown is optimal for optimal health and wellness. So now we're going to do another little experiment. Uh, once again, I'm going to um, set the little timer here. I just reset it and then um, we talk to you a little bit about what we're going to do. So what we're going to do this time, it's a fairly simple um, breath. We're just going to count our inhale and then count our exhale. So I'll count it out loud and what you will do is you will inhale to the count of five. So inhale and then exhale to the count of five. Inhale to the count of five. Exhale to the count of five. Okay, and I'll just kind of count you through that. I'll let you know when to start and I'll let you know when to stop. And then we'll talk about that a little bit. We'll talk about how it feels in the body and um, a little bit more afterwards, okay? So here we go. Go ahead and prepare yourself. Maybe take a big exhale and then we will start. One, two, three, four, Five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. And stop. You can just allow your breath to return to its natural rhythm and flow now. Let's just talk about what we just did. So essentially we broke the breath into 10 second intervals. So five seconds for the inhale, five seconds for the exhale, which means we took that down to six breaths per minute, which is a lot closer to that range, you know, that five to six breaths per minute that um, I had just mentioned. And, you know, when we have a live class, it's really interesting to, to talk about like how, different that feels in the body. For some people, it's really hard. It's a struggle to, to breathe in for that long and to release for that long because it's so different than what we would call our normal relaxed breath. And yet the studies um, that are out there say that that's kind of the ideal breath for optimal function of the body and um, for mental clarity and well-being. So somewhere in that, in that gap between how we breathe when we're not paying attention and we're just allowing this function to happen in our body versus when we get really conscious and we try to slow the breath down to that very intentional six breaths per minute place, 
somewhere in there is your happy spot a good starting spot for you. And maybe that six um, minutes of breath is a goal to um, aspire to. <laughs> um, for some people, you know, if you have a regular um, running or even cardio or yoga practice or a regular meditation practice, then maybe it wasn't a stretch so much to do that six breaths per minute because in some ways you've already been cultivating some breath awareness through those practices. Um, however, if you haven't been practicing um, one of those that I mentioned or any other practice that um, has breath awareness, then it might have felt a little more challenging to control the flow of your breath in that very specific way. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit more too, but um, another thing that we often do is, is we will inhale for longer than we exhale or the other way around. We'll have a very short inhalation and a longer exhale. So <clears throat> ideally for this um, balance of the oxygen and um, carbon dioxide in the body, we want it to be fairly balanced. Now we will talk about a breath moving forward where we intentionally lengthen the exhale. We make the exhale twice as long. And that's really for when we are finding that we're in that fight or flight mode, when our sympathetic nervous system is really wound up and we're trying to like an exaggerated way, bring back around um, the parasympathetic nervous system and switch the systems over from one to the other. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, but generally speaking, you wanna have like a fairly balanced um, exchange there. Okay, great. So um, I just wanna read a little bit of um, information here that uh, I received whenever I was in a Kundalini yoga training. This isn't from my breathwork teacher specifically. Um, they're a yogi, <laughs> obviously, but also um, an assistant professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. Um, and they were talking about this very direct relationship between our breath rate, our mood state, and the automatic, autonomic, sorry, nervous system state. Um, so let's talk about those terms just a little bit more. So we're talking about the autonomic nervous system. We'll kind of put that as this big overhead and it has kind of two branches. So split that off. One being the sympathetic nervous system, which is kind of what we refer to as that fight, flight, or freeze um, state. So the things that we're gonna be looking at there is elevated blood pressure, elevated heart rate, um, short, shallow breathing, uh, preparing to flee, right? Preparing to um, escape from danger. And then we have our parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest kind of state. That is where um, the rebalancing and the healing processes happen in the body. It's where our food gets digested. Um, it's where a lot of really fundamental processes happen within our system. So in, you know, today's society, um, you know, we are unnecessarily in the um, sympathetic nervous system state for a good portion of our day. I mean, depending on, you know, your life and um, how stressful it is or your level of perceived stress in your life. Um, you might be operating in that sympathetic nervous system state for a majority of your day. You know, especially during challenging um, times and times of uncertainty, like we have all collectively been um, moving through in this past, oh, time is getting tricky, year and a half or so. Um, it's very common to see that um, our systems stay stuck in that sympathetic nervous system state. So, you know, ideally we would have lots of time to switch in and out, right? Move back into that rest, digest, heal state. Um, but in today's society, it's, um, it's, it's just not happening for people. We have busy lives. We have um, a lot of um, different challenges. Um, we have a lot of things competing for our attention. We have cell phones in our hands that are constantly dinging and going off. Um, it's, it's just a very fast paced world that we currently live in. And if we're going to find times to be in that rest, digest, parasympathetic nervous system state, we have to do so quite intentionally. And um, I feel like breathwork is, is a really great tool for that. 
Um, I kind of went on a little bit of a, a tangent there and <laughs> lost the quote that I was supposed to be sharing for you. Um, but basically, uh, she's talking about the, the different responses within the body and that the two different systems, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, think of them almost as dials, that they're like dialing up and down um, the heart rate, the digestion, um, the respiration, um, and other really essential functions. And that was really necessary um, from an evolutionary standpoint to help us deal with potential threats, right? The idea of like living with saber toothed tigers out in the wild or the many other dangers that I can't really imagine. But so now today in this kind of nonstop barrage of the things, all the things, <laughs> Um, we get stuck, right? There's this constant alarm system going off or a perceived alarm system going off that keeps us stuck in the sympathetic nervous state. And that's why um, mindfulness practices like breath work are so important. So we've long known that breath changes in response to emotion. When people get panicky and anxious, their breath becomes very shallow and very rapid. But we now know from a number of really good studies that actively changing the breath rate can actually change the autonomic function and mood state. And that, that little quote, that little piece of information to me is like the, the core of this body of work, right? That, um, you know, we, we know what our breath looks like when we are in the sympathetic nervous state. We know what our breath looks like when we are actually in the parasympathetic nervous state. And we have the ability as individuals to change our breath and to change which nervous system state we are residing in. Okay, great. So I'm just moving right along here. So I'm sure everyone has either had someone say to them, <laughs> maybe multiple times um, or seen, right? Somebody say, somebody's really worked up. And what is one of the first things that we say to somebody? Slow down, take a deep breath, right? You can see that their nervous system is activated, that they're breathing really shallow, that like things are starting to go off the rails. And so we intuitively know that if we stop, we slow down, we take a deep breath, that that can help us to reset. So when we start to get anxious or stressed out, our breathing again gets shallow. So we call this chest breathing when we're breathing up here in the chest versus breathing down into the abdomen and the belly. Um, the, thing, the thing that happens as a result of that is, is kind of what feeds into this. So um, I'm sure there's a better way to describe this, but what's coming to mind right now is like almost this like self-fulfilling prophecy. So if I perceive something as being stressful, whether it's a phone call with a family member or um, a pile of papers on my desk when I come into work or running late in the morning, if I perceive it as stressful, if my thought around it is that this is stressful, or if I'm feeling challenged, then my body naturally responds and it starts creating stress hormones. It starts to elevate my blood pressure. It starts to um, uh, slow down the digestion. It's getting ready to prepare for what's coming, right? And um, there's this very interesting and tricky thing between like a, a real threat and a perceived threat, right? Again, let whole, I like to use the saber-toothed tiger analogy. I don't know why. Um, something about it, like that's very real. Like I need my system to respond to that. That is a survival mechanism instinct. Do I need my body to start secreting stress hormones because I have a slightly larger stack of papers on my work on my work desk when I walk in in the morning, or because my keys are misplaced, or I might be a few minutes late to something? Probably not. Probably not. And one way that we can intercede on our behalf <laughs> when, we, when we recognize that this is happening is through the breath. So our bodies are a direct reflection of our relationship with stress. So when we're under duress, our sympathetic nervous system really kicks into gear, right? And there's wisdom in that. There's wisdom in that. That's a protective defense mechanism. Um, but we're not meant to live there long term. Again, kind of referring back to you know what we've all been navigating together over this last year and a half with the um, with the coronavirus. Um, you know, we have all been in this fight or flight mode 
the majority of us anyway, have been in this fight or flight mode for an extended period of time. And that really starts to have some very specifically negative effects on our health, um, both our physical health and our mental health. So um, ideally we'd have the opportunity to reset, to relax, to restore our body and our mind. Um, and I hope that you are all taking time for some kind of self-care um, have those quiet moments in the evening or maybe have some other kind of mindfulness practice meditation. Uh, but I'm finding more often than not, what I'm hearing from clients, friends, people in my life is that they just can't find time to do the practices, right? That they know them, that they've done them before, but life is so busy and life is so hectic and it's hard. And so again, that's one of the things I absolutely love about this practice is because you don't have to dedicate a big chunk of time to it. You don't have to spend a lot of time learning about it. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to be somewhere specific to do it. It's literally a tool that we have accessible to us every single moment of the day, no matter where we are. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, what I feel like is the kind of major connecting piece in all of this, that um, the thread that sort of weaves it all together. And that is a nerve, it's the 10th cranial nerve, it's called the vagus nerve. Um, and it uh, comes out into the ear, it runs down the outside of the neck here. And then it, it connects in with the heart, it connects in with the lungs, it connects in with the um, digestive system. And so when we think about when we're in those stressful moments in life, I, I, like, I found this fascinating when I first started studying kind of the, the vagal or the polyvagal nerve theory. Um, like what are the things that start to happen in your life, right? Uh, elevated heart rate. Sometimes people will start to feel like it for extended periods of time of stress, like um, heart palpitations or flutters or those kind of things, right? Their digestion gets all wonky. You maybe pay a little bit less attention to like the breath rate, but sometimes you can feel like there's like a weight on your chest. It's a little harder to take a deep breath. And so now we're starting to see this like connected, how all of these things are connected through the vagal nerve. Um, so here's what researchers are, are thinking about how it works. So essentially when we breathe, there are millions of like sensory receptors in the respiratory system that are sending signals through the vagal nerve to um, the brainstem. And so the vagal nerve acts like is the bridge, okay? So when we're breathing really um, rapidly and uh, shallow here in our chest, we're sending lots and lots of pings through the vagus nerve that's like firing off in the brainstem, right? And is causing all of these little reactions in the body versus when we slow down the breath and we're breathing all the way down into our belly or doing one of these other you know, breath practices, then the pings start to slow down. The signals start to slow down. The messaging to the body starts to slow down or turns off maybe entirely in, in different cases. So this is kind of the, the, the hidden piece that sort of unites all of those um, stress responses in the body. So um, yeah, I, I like to visualize it like as, the, as our breath is the dial. <laughs> We've got this little dial in. And when the breath is rapid and shallow, right, we're dialing things up. We're, we're, we're turning up the volume in the body like, whoo, something's getting you know, crazy out here. I got to pay attention. We, we need all systems firing versus when we're breathing really nice and slow in this um, controlled um, intentional way, then we have the dial is, oh, just turn the volume down on all the noise in the world of all the things on the to-do list, just let it off, right? And that's, that's kind of my um, sense and understanding and experience of the breath itself. So um, there's a wide range of empirical evidence kind of that has been com compiled through scientific reviews that really support this notion that deep breathing techniques can improve symptoms and aid in illness treatment um, within populations um, and are also beneficial in enhancing well-being and the health of, um, of individuals. So I just want to kind of go through that list a little bit. I want to um, just kind of bring in this perspective of like all the ways that we are benefiting, potentially benefiting our body um, by engaging in these practices. So um, 
Cardiovascular disease is, is one, there's been a study done around it about how deep breathing can be effective in reducing high blood pressure and heart rate. Um, stress, there is evidence based on both objective and subjective measures that points to the effectiveness of deep, deep breathing exercises for improving both psychological and physiological stress. Um, another study talking about anxiety and depression um, that says that deep breathing can reduce anxiety and depression symptoms in the general population and in people uh, with clinical conditions. Another uh, study out there talking about respiratory diseases, uh, deep breathing being helpful in the treatment of asthma and tuberculosis, as well as um, uh, being beneficial for people that are moving through uh, withdrawal from cigarettes. Uh, there was a new study out, I thought I had made notes of it, oh, it's going to be in the next little section here, but I'll go ahead and talk about it since um, I think John Hopkins put it out and it, it just popped up somewhere when I was exploring something. And it was talking about um, these types of breathing practices being beneficial for those who are recovering um, from having COVID-19 and about how that can be a really helpful tool, both for navigating the illness while you're in it um, and, and likely very stressed about the possibilities and the outcomes, as well as in kind of the recovery of the health of um, the lungs themselves. Uh, another study out there um, talking about breathing techniques and diabetes and about how the techniques can enhance the quality of life and improve um, sympathetic nervous system responses in people with diabetes um, when combined with traditional treatments. Another study talking about um, uh, breathing or breath work and cancer, um, deep breathing techniques, improving the fatigue, quality of life, sleep and anxiety, um, obviously when combined with um, traditional treatments. So another whole section here about the role of deep breathing for improving well-being. Um, so different things that it can be super helpful with is regulating the nervous system. I feel like that's primarily what I've been talking about here. So the autonomic, um, sympathetic, fight or flight, parasympathetic, rest and digest. Um, but it's saying that deep breathing with a slow rhythm can increase the relaxation response by activating the parasympathetic nervous system and decreasing the stress response um, by inhibiting the sympathetic nervous system um, and kind of everything that's associated with that. <clears throat> Uh, it can promote emotional well-being. So studies showing how slow breathing techniques um, consistently suggest that their ability to foster positive emotions and behaviors, facilitating emotional regulation and overall well-being. Um, another study uh, that I pulled up here is talking about enhancing vitality. So evidence also points to effects on brain activity, increasing alpha and theta waves, um, which are related to greater vitality. Um, one of the studies that I've read recently that I didn't, I didn't pull up information about, but specifically talking about um, recovery for uh, athletes um, being boosted and seeing improved results with um, incorporating some, some of these breathing techniques. Um, boosting respiratory performance, so different um, breathing exercises that can improve respiratory efficiency through the regulation of pace, volume, and intermittent pauses, or what we would call breath retention, as well as um, the active use of the diaphragm muscle, which is the muscle that, you know, kind of lines right here at the bottom of the rib cage, um, and active exhaling. Um, it improves the biochemical and metabolic processes in the body. So, um, the, oh, maybe this is the one that I was thinking about. Um, a study conducted with athletes suggests that deep, deep breathing following intense physical exercise can, fos can foster antioxidant responses and protect um, from the effects of free radicals, which can translate into improved levels of health and greater longevity. So that's not exactly the one that I was thinking about, about um, physical recovery, but also you know, added benefit there. So breathwork, it's not a new concept. I mean, it's, it's something that, you know, is being written up now in you know, lots of journals. There's a lot more um, scientific studies and things like that out there that are supporting, but uh, the benefit of the breath is something that a lot of ancient cultures have known for many, many years. Um, I'm thinking primarily of um, the practice that is called pranayama, or pranayama that is um, embedded within the yogic traditions. Um, for anyone that's practiced yoga, hopefully um, you've had some kind of an introduction to the um, 
some of the breathing techniques. Uh, here in the West, not a lot of yoga instructors um, go into a lot of depth or detail around um, the breath. There's usually some simple, you know, like belly breathing or ujjayi breath, um, kind of stuff that's mentioned. But <clears throat> within the, the yogic traditions, there's actually a deep, deep body of work. Um, this pranayam um, breath work uh, practice. Um, it's, it's, it's one of the eight limbs of yoga. And um, I, you know, dedicated yogis uh, spend you know, years learning about different practices uh, within breathing and, and practicing those. Um, I, I really feel like this is one of the core elements of both yoga and meditation that make them so effective. Uh, you know, I, I've seen people get on their mats and um, maybe, it's, maybe it's their first time, maybe it's, you know, they've been practicing for years and just having that time, whether it's a short 15 minute practice or maybe it's a long, you know, hour long practice, but taking that time to move and breathe intentionally and be very present in their body, um, it has a strong effect on people. And I really feel like a big, a big part of that is, is the breath. Um, I did a meditation class here for um, higher education, um, I think towards the beginning of the year. And we, we talked about, you know, breath work as a, a big part of, of um, the meditation practice. Again, I really think that um, it's, it's the core element of both of those practices that make them so uh, effective um, for navigating and anxiety and stress. So what we're doing today is really just kind of breaking down um, the, the core simplistic ideas and giving them to you in a really easy to digest and really easy, effective way to use in your daily life. Um, so let's just talk about that just a little bit more. The um, pranayama, you know, the idea of it is that the word refers to a conscious and intentional um, breath practice or breathing pattern, um, it can be it, it broken apart kind of in, in two different parts. So the Sanskrit word prana is, um, refers to the breath as it's connected to vital life force energy. So um, prana is that, is that energy. And um, yama, would be kind of um, like this idea of control um, as maybe the closest thing I can come up with right now. So pranayama is like breath control. Although um, I think uh, we, we try to define things and um, attach them with like words that we use now. Um, if you really read any of the Sanskrit text or anything like that, I think that Maybe yama is more like freedom or liberation versus control, which feel very different to me in my body when I hear those two different words. So I like to think of it more as breath liberation, like freeing the breath and freeing the body through the active practice of the intentional breath. Okay, so um, how how do we how do we do this? How how do we breathe? Like what's the what's the magic? What's the magic formula here? Um, after many years of doing yoga and um, breath work and facilitating breath work sessions, I have to say that I believe that there is not just one way to breathe. Um, there are lots of great tools out there. Some are going to resonate with you. Some are going to work really great for you. And some are not for you know whatever reason. I have some theories around that. Not that we have to go into those in this moment, but um, there's no one way to breathe. That's why I'm gonna present you with kind of a, a handful of tools tonight that you can explore here together um, through the class and then on your own so that you can find the tool that helps to ground and center you, that helps you move through those moments when lots of things are coming at you or when you feel that anxiety rising. Um, let's see here, anything else that I wanna cover before we jump into... Uh, the practices themselves. Hmm. I think we, I think we've arrived at that place. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to just take a quick 10 minute break. I think 10 minutes would be sufficient for you to run to the bathroom, get yourself a, a drink of water, 
we just want to make sure that we can be really comfortable and happy in our bodies um, for this next section. Um, if you're, depending on what your space is like, uh, where you're viewing this, um, grab yourself a pillow, a blanket, or just make sure that the seat that you're sitting in is nice and comfortable so that you can relax and um, just be present with the sensations. You might want to grab a pen, a piece of paper to make some notes about uh, the different breathing techniques, maybe how they felt for you, what your experience was like with them, um, those kind of things. So let's take 10 minutes here. What time is it? Oh, well, that's going to be different for you, isn't it? <laughs> if you're viewing this on a recording. Okay, so I have it on my clock now, um, and I will see you back here in 10 minutes. Looking forward to it.
Hello there, we are back. Hopefully you were able to run and take care of anything that you needed to in order to be nice and comfy here for this next portion of the class. Um, <clears throat> if not, go ahead and grab it. Uh, you're watching this on a recording and you can hit pause and then press play when you're all set to go. So um, I do wanna just revisit um, before we drop into the practices. You know, I covered a lot of information there, um, bounced around kind of a lot, um, <laughs> as I tend to do when I get excited talking about the body and the nervous system. Um, lots of, you know, words, autonomic nervous system, parasympathetic, sympathetic. Um, you don't need to know any of that to do breath work. Um, you don't need to know it or understand it for this practice or these practices to work. Um, I just like to give a little bit of um, background information. Um, I personally, whenever I'm leaning into a new practice, find it really helpful to understand like, why? Why does this work? How is this affecting my system? So I just really wanted to share that with all of you so that you had that um, information, if that was of interest to you. And if that felt like just a whole bunch of words, that's totally okay. It's completely okay. Um, your ability to hold on to any of that or to find it interesting has no effect on your ability to use the breath uh, to drop into these practices. Um, you know, the other thing that I, I kind of wanted to, to follow up on too is, you know, at, at the end, um, before we took a break, I was just talking about there being lots of different, um, you know, breath practices and really just need to find one that works for you. Because really what we're trying to do here is we're, we're trying to cultivate a tool for you to use that helps you to move um, through difficult situations from a more grounded and centered place. So, um, you know, whichever one of these tools, or maybe it's another tool um, that works for you, that's, that's exactly what we're going for. So hopefully within these different breathing practices, um, you'll find something that resonates with you that you can then uh, carry with you um, for those for those moments uh, when when life is challenging you, okay. So um, I think that's all that I wanted to to drop into um, about the last section. So let's let's move into doing some breath work, and we're going to you know start with kind of some really simple practices here in the beginning, and you know don't be fooled that simple doesn't mean powerful. Um, often the most simple practices. Uh, are the most powerful. So um, let's start with <clears throat> just a little bit of awareness so that as we're using different terms, um, you know what that feels like in your body. So earlier I mentioned the term um, chest breathing. I might've also brought up belly breathing, but let's just take a minute here to have an experience of, of what, what that really feels like and what that really means. So <clears throat> the way I suggest that you do this is um, go ahead and put a hand here on your chest and then one down here on your belly doesn't matter which one. And then go ahead and gently close your eyes so that you can really um, turn all of your awareness to kind of the sensations and how this feels in your body. And then let's first start with intentionally breathing only into our chest. So <clears throat> the reason that we have our hands here is because um, it's, it's a nice way to be able to focus that when we are chest breathing, ideally, only the hand that is on our chest is going to rise. The hand on our belly stays stationary. And that might feel a little tricky to do at first. Stay with it. Very intentionally trying to breathe into the chest. We have the rise and fall there under the hand that's resting. Great, so chest breathing. Now let's switch things up. We're gonna to switch to a belly breath. So this hand, the, the lower hand that's down on the abdominals, gonna be a similar thing. So ideally the um, hand that's on your chest stays pretty steady and there's a big movement through the belly as you inhale and exhale. So you really wanna get some good movement there. Your hand really rises and falls. So again, let's close our eyes. Drop into that place of awareness where we're tuning in. And then big inhale, all, breathe all the way down to the belly. Hopefully that hand rises. Exhale, hand sinks. Good, again, big inhale into the belly. 
Just really good movement in the hand. Exhale, and it sinks. And my hand that's on my chest is staying pretty steady. So keep going. Couple more big, big breaths into the belly. Exhale, release, let it go. Again, one more time. Big, big inhale to the belly. Exhale and release. Okay, so now you have an understanding, um, hopefully, of how that feels in those two different places in your body when we're talking about chest breathing, which um, is really what happens when we're in that fight or flight mode and we're breathing really shallow, um, rapid, right? We, we tend to just bring the air right here into the upper part of the chest, maybe even you know into the upper part of the rib cage a little bit. But when we really wanna slow down the breath and get intentional, we wanna try to breathe all the way down into the belly. So we've got that nice rise and fall. Another, um, term that I saw in kind of a breathwork for kids uh, book or something that I was looking at at some point in my studies, um, also called the belly breath, the teddy bear breath. And there was this really sweet image of, you know, you're laying in the way that you're noticing is you've got the, the teddy bear laying on your belly and you're trying to make the teddy bear rise and the teddy bear fall, right? Like creating a, a, a little ride for the teddy bear. And I always kind of visualize that whenever I'm doing uh, belly breathing. Not only is it a, a great visual, right, of how we want this to move in and out, but there's also kind of something sweet and nourishing or comforting about the, <laughs> the teddy bear riding there on my belly for me anyway. Um, take that or leave that for sure. So, okay, so we're gonna drop into kind of our first breath practice here. Uh, we'll start with a simple one and then we'll just kind of start adding on little elements and exploring little elements as we go forward. So um, one more time, I want you to settle into a comfortable space. So that could be sitting in your chair as I am, or um, if, if you're, it's not too late in the day and you don't think you'll fall asleep, that could be stretched out on the ground, you know, make yourself super comfortable, prop your knees up on a pillow, um, get snuggled in underneath a blanket. Uh, don't get so comfortable that you'll fall asleep. Again, these breaths can be pretty calming and help with insomnia or difficulty falling asleep. So if you're feeling a little sleepy, maybe that's not the best position for you to be in. Um, maybe in a chair uh, with the pillow behind you or the blanket across your lap is a better choice if you're feeling a little sluggish and you're watching this towards the end of the day. You decide what feels best for you at home. Go ahead and get settled in. Make yourself cozy and comfortable. And then once you are there, we'll go ahead and drop into this first practice. So um, again, gently close the eyes so that you can uh, really tune in to the breath and the sensations that are showing up in your body. And I want you to just start to slow down your breath. So whatever your natural rhythm and flow is, you wanna just start to lengthen both your inhale and your exhale. Going from that like 14 to 20 breaths per minute, and maybe not dropping all the way down to six, but slowing it down from where you started. And then just lengthen out the inhale and the exhale, making the breath really intentional. Breathing all the way down into the belly. Just letting yourself settle into that deep rhythm. Each inhale travels all the way down to the belly, belly rises. Each exhale, the belly starts to fall. We exhale, release completely. Stay with the breath. And just really start to tune in to how your body is feeling. Just 
and still staying with the breath. People often will speak to feeling like a release or a relaxation in tissues. Sometimes people will start to notice a slowing or quieting of thoughts moving through the mind. Another helpful tip here is that if the mind does start to wander, just gently bring it back. Place all of the attention and focus back on the breath. Just moment to moment, inhaling and exhaling. And you can go ahead and release the breath now. Just allow your breath to return to its natural rhythm and flow. And whenever you're ready, you can gently and slowly open up your eyes. And then I want you to grab the journal, the piece of paper, or whatever you grab to write on, and just write down three to five words that you would use to describe your current state of being. Hopefully, um, what you're experiencing here is a, a feeling of calming or quieting. Um, maybe you're feeling more grounded or that things just slowed in some way. Perhaps you're not there yet, and that's okay too. Um, that was just a very brief, I didn't time it at that time, but just a really short um, session there. And that's one of the other things that I really love about this work is that um, we all have really busy lives. Uh, I would love to say that I always find you know, an hour or more to do one of my practices, but in truth, that's not always the case. There are days where finding three minutes to do intentional breathing is the sum of my practice for the day. And um, the thing that I love about breath work is that it's totally possible to reset your focus and how you're feeling in your body with just a really short amount of time. Um, maybe not in the beginning, maybe it's a little harder to quiet and slow down in the beginning, but um, with some regularity, and that doesn't even look like, you know, practicing every day or that kind of stuff, but with some regularity, um, you can get to where when you just intentionally change the pattern of your breath, the body and the mind start to respond. So um, just looking at those three to five words that you wrote down um, and then considering maybe the state of mind uh, or how your body was feeling uh, when you started the video and um, seeing if there's any shifts there for you. Just noticing, just bringing awareness to how that really simple, um, very short amount of time uh, with the breath maybe has, has changed things for you. Great, great. So let's go ahead and move on now. Uh, we're gonna just add on to the idea of the breath here a little bit. We'll breathe for a little longer uh, period of time this time. So um, this is gonna be what we will call like a three-part breath or a complete breath is what I will call this. Uh, so not really anything that um, too complicated here either. I will kind of walk you through the process. In the beginning, it's gonna feel very similar to what we were just doing. And then we're just gonna add on kind of those two other parts to make it the three part or the complete breath. So uh, stretch, move around, wiggle, get a drink of water if you need to. And then let's go ahead and settle back in. So um, get yourself comfortable in your chair or laying on the ground, whatever's feeling good and supportive for you in this moment. And then again, I will invite you to gently close your eyes. So we'll close the eyes, settle in. Um, if you're finding it helpful to um, have your hand on your belly and, and potentially on your chest, that might be helpful for this breath in particular. <clears throat> if you um, 
done some breath work before or don't find that tool particularly helpful, just let your hands rest and relax wherever they fall. So I'm gonna have you go ahead and start to um, turn your awareness to your breath and start to lengthen both the inhale and the exhale here again. And you wanna focus on breathing all the way down into your belly. Let the belly rise and fall with the breath. Go ahead and take a few more breaths here. Since we just did the belly breath, we won't spend too much time in this stage. If I was doing this as a standalone practice, I'd probably spend a little more time here just opening up with the belly breath. And then we're going to start to add on to the breath. So keep your eyes closed, stay with the breath, just listen for a moment. So the next time that you inhale, I want you to breathe down to the belly as you have been. And then take another little inhale, take another little sip of air and allow it to expand out onto your rib cage. But now as you exhale, try to focus on releasing the air in the rib cage first then releasing through the belly. But again, let's try it again. Inhale, be, breathe into the belly. Another little sip of air as you expand out into the rib cage. Good, exhale, release through the rib cage and then fully through the belly. Good, one more time, we'll kind of walk you through a big inhale into the belly. Another little sip of air as you expand into the rib cage. Exhale, release through the rib cage, and then fully through the belly. Good, I think you've got the hang of it now. So just stay with that breathing pattern here for maybe five or so more breaths. Beautiful, stay with the breath. Keep your eyes closed and just listen as we add on one more time here. With your next inhale, we're gonna once again breathe down into the belly. Take another little sip of air, expand to the rib cage. One more sip of air, extend that breath all the way up into the chest. Good, now exhale, releasing from the chest first. Release to the rib cage and complete the release through the belly. Good, again, big inhale into the belly. Feel the abdomen with air. Now another little sip of air, expand out into the rib cage. Another little breath, open it into the chest. And then start the exhale, release through the chest. Release through the rib cage. Release fully through the belly. Good, one more time, let's walk through it together. Big inhale into the belly. Expand out into the rib cage. Fill the lungs all the way into the top of the chest. Good. Exhale through the upper chest, through the rib cage, all the way through the belly. Good. Everyone stay with this breath. We're going to do this one a little longer.
about halfway there. Stay with that same rhythm and flow of the breath. Last one, very intentionally breathing into the belly, the rib cage, and then the chest. Releasing through the chest, through the rib cage, through the belly. Beautiful. Keep your eyes gently closed. Let your breath return to its natural rhythm and flow. And just tune in once again to how your body is feeling. Notice any subtle shifts in your physical body, in your mental perspective. It's being the observer here for a moment. Seeing what there is to notice in the stillness. And then when you're ready, you can go ahead and gently blink your eyes open and come on back. So this is the part of class that I generally love the most <clears throat> when we're doing a live class and we can all kind of share about our experiences. Um, that's not the dynamic we're doing right now. <laughs> um, so maybe find a partner to do this practice with, share it with a loved one, um, a friend, your child. Um, these, this is a tool that anyone of any age can use and um, just sharing that, you know, what are you feeling? What are you experiencing? What does that feel in your body? It can be um, such a, an opening process. I find whenever I teach classes like this, people often will doubt kind of what they're feeling. Um, and to be able to, to interface with someone else and hear like, oh, you're feeling that too. Wow. I, perhaps that's actually happening for us. Um, or, oh, you know, that is what I was feeling. And I just couldn't quite put a name to it. So it can be fun to um, dialogue with someone else or to share in the kind of deepening in these practices with, with someone else. Yeah. So uh, hopefully, um, through that practice, you're feeling you know, another level or finally dropping into something that feels like a calming or a slowing of the system. Uh, maybe it just feels like a little um, more ease uh, or less busyness in the mind. Um, all of those things are great. Uh, you know, depending on where you're at in your life and how your day unfolded before you were watching this video, uh, sometimes it can be easier to drop in and some days it's a little bit more of a struggle. Sometimes it takes a little bit more time. Uh, know that that's just a completely normal part of the process. So, um, okay, great. So we've explored um, the three-part breath with a complete breath there. So um, the practices that we've explored, again, if you're kind of jotting down notes of the different breaths so that you can remember them, or remember how they felt or how they worked for you. Uh, the first one that we did was just really kind of having that awareness between chest and belly breathing. Um, the second one that we did was really intentionally just doing a nice slow belly breath. The third one that we kind of um, just finished up with is the three part of the complete breath where we breathe into the belly and the rib cage and then the upper chest. And then we release from the upper chest and the rib cage and then the belly. Um, so now, 
we're going to do something that, um, you know, I've seen it have a couple of different names, uh, and it also somehow feels a little bit nameless because uh, it is really just an exploration. But today, for these purposes, we're going to call this the intentional breath. So let's see, we have the intentional breath. Um, we're gonna do Nadi Shodhana and so we're almost halfway there. Why don't we do one more breath practice and then we'll um, take a little moment to maybe move our bodies around a little bit um, and stretch a little bit. So if, if you have it in you, let's do one more practice together before we do that. If not, and you feel like you're being called to move around a little bit or to stretch uh, or something else, just say pause <laughs> and then to come back when you're ready. Okay, great. So we'll go ahead and move forward here with um, what I'm gonna call the uh, intentional breath. And so I'm gonna be asking you to breathe into different parts of your body. Now, obviously um, it's, it's not really possible, for example, to breathe into our feet. We don't have lungs in our feet. That's um, not, not a, a real thing that we can do. And yet we can um, send our intention and the uh, energy, so to speak, around the breath into different areas of the body. So whenever I ask you to like breathe into your toes or breathe into your fingertips, that's what we're talking about. Um, don't get hung up on the the kind of logistics there. We're just talking about sending our, you know, breathing as deep down into the body as you can and sending our intention and the energy into those different areas, okay? So uh, again, let's go ahead and drop in for practice. Uh, let yourself settle back into your chair or that cozy little spot or nest that you have created for yourself somewhere. Um, get comfy and gently close your eyes. Um, you know, I find for myself that closing my eyes as part of a breathwork practice is helpful because it really allows me to tune into the breath and the sensations that are coming to the surface through my body. However, we have talked about this being a practice that you can do anywhere. And, um, you know, absolutely the closing of the eyes is not a necessary um, part of the breath work. I just find that it helps me to tune into the breath. And especially in this case where you're looking at a video, I find that it can be a little distracting to be both trying to focus on the breath and tune into what that feels like in my body and to count and to watch the silly faces that I may be making at any given moment. So. Um, as you wish, but that is why I invite you to close your eyes. It's certainly not um, anything that's necessary. Um, you could walk down the street with your eyes open, doing lots of these um, breathing practices. In fact, some of my favorite um, breathing um, exercises, they're not ones that we'll be covering in this class necessarily, but they're like walking meditations where you're um, doing some kind of a, a, a breath or a breath retention or a breath counting practice while walking. And if you ever see me around town doing these little things with my fingers while I'm walking, that's exactly what I'm doing because <laughs> I'm doing some kind of a, a breath or pranayama walking meditation. So, um, okay, back to the practice, intentional breathing. Um, again, gently close your eyes and settle in or not if that's not comfortable for you. And uh, what we're gonna start to do is really intentionally breathe into different parts of your body. I feel that this practice is really helpful for um, building awareness um, how your body is doing. I find that it's um, helpful to, to find and explore those areas where you're feeling discomfort or um, constriction or um, resistance. Um, if you have uh, discomfort or um, pain in the body, I find that it can be a way to help soften and free up that pain or discomfort. Um, to me, the breath is a signal that, that you're paying attention, that you're present with any specific part of your body. And um, I find that building that awareness with your body um, is, is kind of a part of the breathwork practice, right? Because um, as we build our awareness and our relationship with our body, we start to 
build our relationship and our awareness of our breath in any given moment. And we start to then take notice of those moments when we are breathing more shallow and up into the upper chest, when our breathing's gotten rapid, uh, when our heart rate is rising. So um, for me, all of that kind of starts with having some, some awareness of our body and how we're feeling. And I feel like this is just a really lovely way to marry um, body awareness and breath together. So let's uh, start by just slowly deepening into the breath. Like I say, deepen into the breath. That's the process of, of lengthening the inhale and the exhale. It's the process of calling the breath down into the belly. It's the process of releasing the breath as fully and completely as possible. This is what I mean when I say I'm deep into the breath. And then as you're breathing in this nice, long, deep breath, um, start to notice. Notice how your body's feeling. You can do that you know, by doing a little scan of the body if you'd like. Maybe starting at the toes and working your way up or starting at the top of the head, so working your way down. And what we're, we're looking for is we're just looking to notice any particular area, there's no right or wrong or any one area, just a particular area that feels like it's, it's calling for your attention or your awareness or that you are noticing with your awareness that it um, just feels a little different, maybe a little constricted or denser or heavy or you know, there's all kinds of different ways to describe the sensations we feel. And once you've located um, an area of your body that you want to work with, then we're just going to breathe into that area. Well, they kind of touched on when we started the practice. I acknowledge that we do not have lungs in our knees. We cannot actually breathe into our knees, for example, but um, staying with a nice long deep breath. We want to hold the intention of our knees as if, or the part of your body you've chosen, as if you're breathing into that space and then exhaling completely out of that space. Breathing all the way down into that area of your body and then releasing fully, completely from that area of your body. And just stay with that breath and that focus and holding your awareness there, just noticing the sensations. Sometimes you won't more notice much at all, and other times um, really interesting things will come up. We're gonna continue breathing in this way for a couple of minutes. So just let the breath be intentional, but gentle. I'm not trying to force the breath into that area, but force the release. Just breathing into that space and listening to that area of your body. Noticing the sensations that arise. If you're having difficulty staying focused, maybe you place your hand over that area of your body that you're breathing into. Sometimes having the hand there will help hold your attention in that one area, that space. And 
Another minute here. And still staying with that nice deep breath. Go ahead and scan the body again. Notice if that area that you're breathing into feels any different. It doesn't have to make sense or be logical. You don't necessarily have to notice anything at all. Just giving yourself that opportunity to, to see, to listen, to feel any potential shifts that could happen there. And then go ahead and find a new area that is speaking to you and then start to direct the breath there to that area. Oftentimes students will get really um, hung up in their head trying to pick the right part. Like, am I doing this right? There's no wrong way to do um, this work. It's kind of the beautiful thing about it. And however it's unfolding for you in this moment is exactly right. Just trust in that and follow your intuition. I'm going to breathe into this area now for about another minute. Again, a nice tool if you're having difficulty holding your awareness is just to place your hand kind of over the area. Okay, one more big inhale, followed by a nice big complete exhale. And staying with your eyes closed for another moment here. Let your breath just return to its natural rhythm and flow. And then just take the next few moments here to just notice. And there's no right or wrong. can be interesting when we create the space and enough stillness to really listen on what will sometimes come to the surface. So if that practice was resonating with you in any way, and it's once again called the intentional breath or intentional breathing, And it's really um, just a combination of a belly breath 
with focus on the body, focus on breathing into the different areas. So make any notes that you might want to about that or what you felt or experienced during the practice. And then I would encourage you to um, get up off the floor or out of your chair, maybe do a little bit of movement, um, whatever feels good in your body and aligned this moment. Um, we have about three more practices that we want to explore. So just bring some movement in. These practices can be really calming, right? That's the intention. <laughs> um, and we can start to get a little sleepy. It gets to be a little harder to stay focused and to be present. So if you're feeling that, either uh, just explore some movement here uh, with me or pause and maybe um, take a little bit more of a movement session or hit pause and come back to the recording uh, when you're feeling a little more alert and just enjoy this state of um, calm, slow energy. So, um, for me, I'm gonna go ahead and just proceed into the next practice. As I say, take as much of a little gap or time there as you feel called to. So the next um, breath that I wanna share, it's called Nadi Shodhana, um, or more simply, uh, alternate nostril breathing. And this is a really um, fun one. Um, I believe in some practices, it's also called the sun and moon breath. And I can talk a little bit more about <clears throat> why it's called that uh, um, once we experience it. I find it's um, sometimes better to just jump into a practice and experience it and then um, learn a little bit more of the details about it afterwards. So for this one, we're going to um, use our, our thumb and a finger. Um, I've seen it practiced both ways. So with the thumb and a pinky, kind of going back and forth, um, or just the thumb and um, the pointer, pointer finger. Um, I have also seen it with the ring finger, so just really whatever feels best for you. It's um, less about the um, finger that you are using as well as the kind of um, blocking and opening of the nostrils. So what we are going to be doing here is with the thumb, I'm gonna be pressing, actually, I can't press and talk to you at the same time without sounding really funny, but you'll be pressing into the right side of the nostril, essentially closing it off so that you can then inhale through only the left nostril. And then we're gonna switch and exhale only through the right nostril. Then we switch things up, inhale through the right. Switch your fingers, exhale through the left. Okay, so we'll do that again. Now just so you feel like you've got it. <clears throat> So uh, block off the right nostril, inhale through the left, switch, exhale through the right. Now inhale through the right, switch, exhale through the left. And if we were gonna continue on, we would inhale through the left, switch, Exhale through the right. Switch things up, inhale through the right. Switch hands, exhale through the left. Okay, hopefully you're getting the, the rhythm and the flow of it there. Um, <clears throat> if not, just rewind it back. <laughs> and watch that little stage there again. Um, there's also really great uh, tutorials on online if you put in alternate nostril breathing or Nadi Shodna that might explain it in different words or different terms that uh, resonate with you more. So let's, let's try it. Let's try it out. So um, I do prefer to be sitting for this one. Uh, you could certainly try it laying down. There's no right or wrong way to necessarily do this. There's just what works for you. So get comfortable and whatever that expression of comfort looks like in this moment. 
And then uh, using the thumb and one of your other fingers, I, I notice that I tend to use my pointer finger, um, although I do feel like um, it was originally taught using the ring finger in my Kundalini training, but I could be wrong about that. Um, I haven't referred back to that in a while as if many practices, you learn it one way and then you start to evolve into what works for you. So I'm gonna use my thumb and my pointer finger. Um, so take a nice deep inhale. Nice big exhale. And then let's start the breath. We'll plug the right nostril and take a big inhale through the left nostril. Switch sides, exhale through the right. Good, big inhale through the right. Push your fingers, exhale through the left. Good, continue switching from side to side. Moving in a rhythm and a flow that feels good for you. Good, keep it going. I'm gonna be able to experience this for a couple more minutes. And I might encourage you on this one to, to gently close your eyes, and really tune into the energy that you feel as you breathe through each nostril. Just noticing if it feels different in any way. Sometimes people will um, catch visuals, maybe colors, um, feel a subtle temperature difference. Feel more ease breathing through one nostril or the other. Just taking note of all of those little bits of information we're going to share with you. about 30 seconds left, continuing to alternate. Last couple of breaths here. I'm going to go ahead and complete the breath cycle that you are on. If your eyes were open, go ahead and gently close them now. Relax your hand down. The breath return to its natural rhythm and flow. And again, take this opportunity to tune in. How are you feeling on all levels of your being? When we first started the breathing practices, I asked you to jot down three to five words. You don't have to actually write anything down again, but do those same words still resonate with you or they started to shift? 
transform into other descriptors. When you're ready, you can slowly blink your eyes open and come on back to the video. Nadi Shodna, or um, alternate nostril breathing, as I mentioned, also called the sun and the moon breath. Um, <clears throat> so in the wisdom traditions that this comes from, um, the idea is that we have um, these uh, energy lines through our body um, called the nadis. And that breathing in this very specific way opens, clears, and purifies the nadis or these energy channels within the body and um, moves the body from a state of disharmony into harmony and balance. And there have actually been some studies that support that idea. Um, we had some notes here um, about a, a pilot study that found um, with a, a group, it doesn't say how large the group was, um, but in seven days of practicing uh, Nadi Shodhana or alternate nostril breathing, sorry, I keep calling it so many things, <laughs> keep it, keep it uh, complicated, we'll try to simplify here, um, that the 90% of the people who were in the study um, felt that their overactive, what they were describing as their overactive nervous system and the symptoms related to it were rebalanced and that the symptoms had either eased dramatically or cleared completely. Um, there's also a study uh, done um, with this breath technique that um, showed a lowering of blood pressure in the, the sample group and um, improved mental focus. So just some sideline uh, potential benefits from that one. I personally find that one to be really powerful. I like that one a lot. And the reason that they call it the sun and the moon breath is um, there are other practices where you would potentially like close off the right nostril and only breathe in and out through the left, which can also be a really nice calming breath. The idea um, behind that is that this is your moon side. The left is going to be the moon side or the more cooling energy, calming energy, um, the more receptive grounding energy. And so when we block the, the right nostril and only breathe through the left, we're activating that cooling, calming energy within the body. So then the other flip side um, that I kind of alluded to uh, earlier when we were talking about the different practices is that if you were to, to block the left or the moon side and only breathe through the sun side, that that breath would be warming, heating, activating, energizing kind of energy that you would be bringing up in the body. So when we do Nadi Shodhana, <clears throat> what we're doing is we are balancing those two energies in the body. So the reason it works so great um, if you're feeling anxious or have anxiety going on or something like that. And those are the energies that are rising by breathing through both, then we're creating that balance, right? So we bring the moon energy up and we decrease the sun energy so that we find that harmony, that inner harmony, that sweet spot, that, um, that calm, grounded, centered spot. Um, but you can also use um, the two different sides independently at different moments. You know, think of that as the... Um, the, the coffee side, <laughs> the activating, energizing side, and um, the other side is the chamomile tea side, <laughs> the one that helps to um, calm you and, and bring things down in that way. So beautiful. I hope you enjoyed that one. That really is one of my um, favorites. And, you know, <clears throat> outside of just the kind of basic belly breath, um, kind of slowing the breath down to that five or six breaths per minute, I feel like this is the one that um, more studies or um, there's more su supporting evidence around like the spe this specific breath and its specific outcomes, which is just kind of fun to see in these um, 
less studied, less documented areas. So, um, but from my personal experience, I really feel the benefits of that one um, too. So, okay, ready to jump into the next one? Great. So this is gonna be um, called square breathing or um, it's sometimes in a bigger way, just called like a breath retention practice. Um, so in square breathing or breath retention um, practices just in general, the idea is that we're going to um, inhale for a certain period of time. We're gonna hold the breath um, for square breathing, it will be for the same amount of time, not all breath retention practices are, but for square breathing, we're gonna inhale for a certain count, we'll say. In this one, we're gonna use a four count, and then we're gonna hold the breath in or retain the breath for that same count, so count of four. And then we're gonna exhale for that same number, so exhale to a count of four, and we're gonna hold the breath out, so um, not taking new breath in for the count of four. And so that's what creates the square. So inhaling for four, holding the breath in for four, exhaling for four, holding the breath out for four. That's gonna kind of be the, the dynamic. And now um, four might not be your magical number. I found that it's a, it's a pretty good spot for um, beginners to start, but um, maybe you feel like that's too easy or that feels fast for you. You could easily do a six count, you know, six, six, uh, Count inhaling, six count holding the breath in, six count exhaling, six count holding the breath out. So um, any combination like that would work for square breathing. There are other breath retention practices that we're not necessarily gonna do here where there are different numbers between um, how long, actually, what are we doing with those? No, we won't, we won't retain the breath in the next one. Um, we will, you would inhale for a certain amount of time, you would retain the breath for another amount of time and then exhale for another amount of time. So um, another like common one of those is like the four, six, eight breath. So inhale for four, retain for six, exhale for eight. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about that dynamic of um, exhaling for twice as long as, as you inhale, I think with one of the next, one of the next breaths. So. We won't go too much into that or create too much confusion. Hopefully I didn't already around this next breath. We're gonna do a four count square breath. So inhaling for four, holding, retaining the breath for four, exhaling for four, and then holding the breath out for four before you start the next inhale. So, all right, uh, go ahead and settle in. <laughs> if you're not still in the same exact place that you were, um, make yourself comfortable. Choose to close the eyes or not, um, and let's get started. I always like to start um, a new breath pattern with just one big inhale in and one big exhale out. And then let's start to inhale to the count of four. Hold the breath, again, counting to four. And then start to exhale, four count. Hold the breath out for four. Good, again, inhaling, counting to four. Continue with your own rhythm and flow there. And, you know, we talked about potentially um, making the square bigger. We can also make the square smaller. If counting to four feels like a long time to be holding the breath in or holding the breath out, Drop it down to three, maybe even two. Find a number and a rhythm that feels gentle in your body. All of your awareness, just staying with the count with the movement of the breath. If we're doing a four count breath here, 
feels fitting to do it for about four minutes. So we're about a minute and 30 seconds in right now. I'll let you know when we're halfway there. As you're breathing and counting, just noticing the experience that you're having in your body, how it feels. At this point, we're about halfway there. So two more minutes. At this point, we're about three minutes in. Let's see if we can stay with it. Just one more minute to go. There. Last round, wherever you are, go ahead and finish up on your count. Keep your eyes open, go ahead and gently close them. Once again, just tuning in. You never know when you're gonna tune in and your body's gonna tell you something new. So just keep checking. Great. Whenever you are ready, you can go ahead and gently blink your eyes open, come on back to the video. If you want a little more time to just sit and be with what you're feeling, feel free to hit the pause button and come back when you're ready. So, um, you know, with breath retention practices, there's tons, lots of different ways to do the breath retention. The basic idea behind um, having a retention piece within it <clears throat> is that um, what is thought to happen is that when you're holding the breath um, in, it pressurizes the lungs to some degree and gives them the time, the ability to kind of inflate and open and expand a little more, which um, then expands the lungs overall capacity over time doing the practice. That translates into um, better, more complete oxygenation, um, which then, you know, muscle function, um, organ function, all kinds of really great things start to kind of um, unfold from that place. So that's the basic idea um, or the premise behind there being some kind of breath retention as part of the breathing practice is that um, you're really kind of focusing on then expanding the lungs and increasing their capacity. I do believe uh, 
um, that that's one of the practices, you know, a breath retention style practice. Um, as I mentioned earlier in that um, John Hopkins study uh, with COVID patients that they were that they were working with, right? To again to um, increase and start to expand that lung capacity and to help with the um, oxygenation of the body once again. So yeah, I'm just get to have a little experience with that. Um, you can see how that one feels and fits into your flow. Um, I think there's just one more practice here that I want to share with you. Um, just another tool, hopefully, so that we've got something that uh, works for everybody. Um, so this is going to be a lengthening your exhale. I think I, I think I mentioned something about this early on. It's hard to remember. Um, but about the reasons why you would want to exhale longer than the inhale. And again, as we're talking about that dial or maybe even go to the like switch theory um, here, if you're, if you're really noticing like I, I, I missed the window, <laughs> I am definitely in fight or flight, my head is spinning, my heart is moving really fast, um, I am definitely in the sympathetic nervous system fight or flight response, no doubt, I'm there, I've arrived. Um, and you <clears throat> want to very actively and intentionally switch yourself back over into that parasympathetic and fight or flight. Uh, these um, lengthened exhale type of breathing practices um, can be super beneficial in, in those moments. So um, they're pretty simple. Um, there's some variations within this, but the idea is going to be that you're going to inhale for a count of, let's just use this example, um, since we were just with a four count breath, we're gonna inhale for the count of four, then we would exhale to the count of eight. And exhaling to the count of eight, if you're new to breath work, might feel like a bit much. So inhaling to the count of three, exhaling to the count of six, right? As long as that second number is double, inhale, inhaling to the count of two, exhaling to the count of four. Those are all possibilities. Um, start where it feels good for you um, and then maybe work your way up or maybe you just find a sweet spot that just feels like the place you want to be and um, that's just where you stick and that's okay. Um, one, of the, um, one of the things that I like to add to this is going to be that the inhale would happen through the nose. So um, inhaling for the count of two, let's say for example, through the nose. And when we get to the count of four, we are going to breathe out through the mouth, but not just out through the mouth. We're going to um, purse or pucker or make kissy lips, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, um, with the mouth to the count of four. So inhale through the nose to the count of two. Exhale through the mouth with puckered, pursed, kissy lips to the count of four. So one of the saddest parts of not getting to do this um, in person is I don't get to experience all of you um, making your kissy lip face. <laughs> you just get to experience me doing it. So, okay, um, let's settle in here a little bit. Uh, we don't have to drop in so much with this one. I think that you've all been able to get the experience at this point of what it feels like to drop in and to connect with the breath and to listen to the body afterwards and just um, tune into the experiences. So um, here, just again, you know, whatever count you choose to do, we can inhale to the count of four. Purse the lips, we're gonna double the number, exhale to the count of eight. Again, inhale to the count of four through the nose. Exhale, purse lips, count of eight. And my count of four and your count of four are potentially gonna look really different as long as you try to stay consistent to what your count is both through the nose and the mouth, then you'll still be hitting the target there. Okay. Fantastic. Wow. I think we hit all of them and I think I got them done in the mostly appropriate amount of time. <laughs> it was supposed to be a, a two hour class. So I think we're just right in that window. 
um, which is good. I'm usually scrambling at the end to, to try to fill in the rest of the information. So I feel good about being able to share all of those with you. Um, you know, I, I, I hope you're finding this information interesting, um, you know, with me, like, fumbling through, <laughs> finding my words and all of that, I hope that you were able to um, feel into the practice and um, notice uh, how your body was experiencing the different types of um, breath practices that I presented here today. And hopefully you're feeling like this is a, a tool that is accessible, easy to use, and something that, that you'll actually drop into in your daily life. Um, with regards to doing that, I, I find that it can be really helpful in the beginning to um, set some kind of a little timer for yourself or to have times of the day, like in the morning when I have my tea, um, while I'm waiting for it to be cool enough to not uh, burn me so that I can enjoy it, I'm going to do three minutes of breathing. I'm going to do a minute of breathing. I'm going to do 30 seconds of breathing, uh, whatever that looks like for you. And then maybe again at lunchtime, um, you know, whenever I take my lunch break, um, when I sit down before I start to eat, because um, being in the parasympathetic nervous system can be super helpful for digestion if you have digestion issues or just in general, um, taking 30 seconds a minute three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, how, whatever feels good to you um, to, to do one of these breathing um, practices or just a couple of deep breaths into the belly before you have lunch. Maybe um, again at, at dinner time or just before you go to bed. Um, as I mentioned early on, these practices can be really great uh, for helping you transition from, you know, maybe scrambling to get the kids to bed or, um, you know, if you're like me, like doing some work or taking care of stuff on the computer or um, picking up the house or all of the many things that I'm sure we're all trying to figure out how to do before we um, allow ourselves to retire to bed in the evening. So making that transition from that like um, solar sun energy of doing to the kind of moon energy of um, being and allowing uh, these, these, these practices can be a great way to help you transition to that. So right before bed as you're like winding down or, you know, maybe just right before you go home for the day, um, if you have a fast pace or extremely stressful job, um, maybe doing a couple of these breathing practices right before you walk out of the office, before you're heading home, or as soon as you get into your car or right before you walk in the, the door um, to like, interface with your family or to just be in your sacred space of your home. Um, those could all be like really great ideas of ways to kind of um, intentionally seed these practices um, throughout the day. Um, a setting a timer for like once an hour or whatever number feels good to you. Um, I know that they have the fancy watches now that um, even will tell you like it's time to get up and move or take a deep breath. Um, you can incorporate something in with that. There are lots of great apps out there that most of them combine kind of meditation and breathing practices together, but there are some out there that are just really breath focused. Um, there's one um, called Beatfulness, I think. All, all one word, beat, B-E-A-T, fullness. Um, there's one called state, like S-T-A-T-E. And then um, there's a couple I haven't really explored but that I know are out there. There's like I breathe, um, breathe plus, breathe in is another one. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're a person who likes to have kind of, um, a reminder or a technology to help you get into a new rhythm or a new pattern. Those are definitely all tools that you could use. Um, again, one of the things I love about breath work is that you don't necessarily need that, but whenever we're trying to establish a new pattern or a new rhythm in our life, um, they can definitely somehow sometimes be um, helpful and supportive. So uh, feel free to, to explore some of those or set timers or um, post-it notes are kind of my go-to low-tech reminder. <laughs> Just, you know, put one that says breathe on the um, morning mirror, one on the rear view visor in the car, and one on the computer at desk, uh, the computer at work, um, whatever works for you. 
right? We all have uh, systems that we uh, use that kind of help us to establish new patterns. But I hope you enjoyed the class. I hope you found something that was useful and helpful in there. And um, absolutely, if you have any questions or um, are struggling with something or have a question about something that I said that wasn't clear, um, you can definitely reach out through higher education. They can connect you through email or through um, my phone to get in touch with me. I'd be really happy to have a conversation with you um, here about how the practices are going and answer any questions that you have. So um, have a wonderful evening or maybe it's not evening where you are in your timeline when you're watching this. Have a beautiful day and thanks for tuning in. Take care. Bye.